Logic Pro for iPad 2.2 is here with some great new features like Enhanced Stem Splitter, Flashback Capture, Search and Select Track, Normalize Region Gain, and of course, MIDI Learn. Plus, we've got a brand new sound pack and a new way to export your project. So in this video, I'm going to break down everything you need to know to get started with Logic Pro 2.2. Let's go. If you'd like to learn a heap more about creating, recording, and releasing your best music in Logic Pro, check out the complete playlist of videos in the description. And while you're down there, you'll find timestamps if you want to jump to a particular feature. You'll also find links to more complete videos showing all of these different features. To make sure your Logic Pro is updated, first jump over to the App Store, search Logic Pro, tap on Logic Pro for iPad, and you'll see a blue update button. Hit that button and the latest version will be downloaded to your iPad. I'm here in a pre-release version of Logic Pro 2.2, which Apple were kind enough to let me check out so that I can help you hit the ground running. Let's dive straight into one of the coolest new features, which is the enhancements to Stem Splitter. Stem Splitter was added in Logic Pro 2, and at the time you could split out vocals, drums, bass, and other instruments. What have they done here? They've added in two additional instrument types for guitar and piano, as well as your other instruments. So now instead of splitting out to four tracks, you can split out to six. Let's show you how it works. Here we have a stereo wave file here in this Logic Pro project. Let's play it. I was feeling like something was missing when I opened up my door. Sounds pretty cool, but what if we want to remix this? We want to split out the vocals. We want to extract the drums or replace the bass. We can do all that with Stem Splitter. All we need to do is tap, tap again, and then hit Stem Splitter, and you'll see you get these options. Now, if you change nothing, what it will do is separate out all stems and give you six separate tracks. Let's hit Apply and take a look. And like magic, there you have all six tracks. And now we have vocals, drums, bass, guitars, piano and keys, and our other instruments, which separates out things like brass. How well did it do, though? Let's take a listen. Let's start with our vocals. I was feeling like something was missing when I opened up my door. Pretty cool. What about our drums? Our bass? Now the fun stuff. What about the guitars? Can it pull out the guitars? There's the acoustic. And the electric. Now what's it done with our piano sounds? Let's take a listen. You can hear it's extracted both the electric piano and that acoustic piano sound. And last but not least, our other instruments. It's pulled out the horns and also the organ and put it under other. How cool is that? It's like magic the way it can actually extract out these different tracks and separate them from just a stereo wave file. As before, you can choose which tracks you actually want. If you only wanted, say, the vocals and the drums, you can deselect these, and you can even add them into their own submix down the bottom here. The other thing you have now is a preset. So if you want, say, just a cappella, it will select just the vocals. What about an instrumental? It will remove the vocals and give you all the instruments as a submix. So there's a bunch of different options that you have with the new stem splitter here in Logic Pro 2.2. Let's talk about flashback capture. This is a brand new feature added to Logic Pro 2.2, and what it does is it's always recording even when you're not. So if you ever had that instance where you hit play instead of record and you do an amazing take and it doesn't get it down because you didn't record it, well, guess what? Now Logic Pro is always recording, whether it's your MIDI or your audio tracks. Let's show you a demo of this right now. Let's say I've got my track set up here and I want to record some piano sounds in, but I'm not ready to record yet. I'm just going to hit play and do some noodling. I was feeling like something was missing when I opened up my door. And I come up with a really good part, but I didn't record it. Well, no problem. We've got this, the flashback capture. If I tap on that one, like magic, we've got that part restored. To add flashback capture to your control bar, all you need to do is tap in the top right, go customize control bar, and here under transport, make sure that flashback capture is turned on. 
And it's not just your MIDI tracks, it works for your audio tracks as well. So if you're noodling on guitar or singing in a part, you can also capture that if you're just playing around. So let's again hit play, and I'm going to sing in a little part. Oops, I didn't hit record. No problem. Flashback capture has me covered. Just tap that one and there is the part. That's this little backing idea that I recorded and it's safe and sound. Next, we have the new search and select track function. You know when you've got a large project and you're scrolling around trying to find the track you're looking for? Well, now Logic Pro has a solution for that. If we tap the three dots in the middle here and tap on search and select track, we can now type in here, say, bass, and then tap on that one, and it's going to take you straight to the track. It also works with track numbers. So if we tap that one and we go search and select track, let's go track number 16. That's our crash symbol, and it's even going to find that if it's in these nested drums. So a handy way of quickly navigating your way around those larger project files in Logic Pro. Another small quality of life feature that I find pretty cool is you can now add an export button to your control bar. So previously to export, you'd have to tap in the top here and tap on export. If you want to reduce the number of clicks when you're exporting your track, you can now tap in the top right here, go customize control bar, and over here under other, you can add export. And now you get an export button right here on your control bar. So anytime you want to export a version of your track as a wave or as a compressed file, just tap on that one and you're straight in to your export window. Again, not a huge update, but definitely a good quality of life one. Normalize region gain has been added to Logic Pro 2.2. What this allows you to do is normalize the volume, which means bring the level up and make it more consistent. By default, it'll bring it up to a peak volume of minus one dB. So we've selected this. If we just hit apply, you can see there that if you've recorded something in a bit quiet, you can use the normalize function now to boost that volume. If we select multiple regions here, tap, tap again, and go to normalize region gain, now we can either do all equally or or they can be per track equally or regions individually. So if we wanted to say do regions individually here and hit apply, see what it does here? It levels them all out. Whereas if we did it the other way by doing all equally and hit apply, you can see the louder parts still remain louder. So you get to choose whether you want to level out your whole performance or you just want to make it a relative loudness, but based on what you've already played in. You can also select this across multiple tracks and regions and normalize your volume that way. The other way to normalize is not peak volume, but loudness, which uses LUFs or loudness units full scale. If you don't know what that means, don't stress out too much, but you can do some research and find out why you might want to do this. If we do this now, you do get some changes, but you can see it may even turn it down because normalizing isn't always turning it up. Sometimes it's leveling it out as well. So you can experiment with that new feature. It's a handy one. Is it as good as the merge feature in GarageBand? Not quite, but it's a cool one that's been added in. Okay, it is time. The learn MIDI function is here and it allows you to map your knobs and your sliders and your buttons on your MIDI controllers to functions here in Logic Pro. It's very cool and here's how it works. To get to MIDI learn, we tap in the top right and tap on learn MIDI. You can also add a button to your control bar by tapping in the top right, tapping customize control bar and over here under other, tap on learn MIDI. And now you can use this shortcut button to go straight in to the MIDI Learn. So what can be assigned? Well, anything with this light blue dotted outline. So we're talking your transport controls, your volume, mutes and solos and records, and even some of your plugin parameters. In fact, let's show you how we can attach a knob to this low cut filter. So I've plugged in my MIDI keyboard here. We're ready to go. So the first thing I need to do is decide what I want to control. In this case, it's this low cut filter. So I'm just going to grab this and move it side to side. Now I grab my knob and turn that knob and check it out. It immediately knows what I want and now I can use this knob to control that filter. And now I can play in live and actually move this knob and change the filter. I can even set up all of the knobs on my Akai controller to match all the knobs on this Alchemy synth. So you can see that I've already set up the first seven there. They've got this dark outline and that little arrow. Let's do the final one here. I tap on that one and then I twiddle my knob. 
hit stop learning, and they're all done. I can now use my knobs here on my keyboard to directly control any of the knobs here on the Alchemy synth and use them as I play. And if you're using a MIDI keyboard with transport controls or a volume fader, yes, you can assign them too. Let's show you that now. We're here in MIDI assignments. Let's tap on the play button and hit the play button on our keyboard. And there you go, it's assigned, ready to use. Now, some controllers like this one use note messages instead of MIDI messages. So this record key, for instance, is going to actually play a note and we're going to get an error if we try to learn that one. What you need to do is jump into these settings here and turn this one off the ignore MIDI notes while learning. What will now happen when we hit record is it'll actually bring up that record so we can actually tell it to assign to the record function there. Let's do the same with our stop or our back button and there you go. Even ones that are notes instead of the CC events are going to work as long as you change that setting. And as you would have seen there, it doesn't actually matter what order you do. If you press the button and then press the control, it'll still map it, no problems. And now instead of using our transport controls on the screen, we can use our buttons on the keyboard. One of my favorite things to assign is volume. So to do that, we grab any volume fader and just start moving it there. Then grab our volume fader on our keyboard and move that one there. And you can see it'll instantly start controlling the volume of this track. But that's not super useful to just control one track's volume. What if we want it to control whichever track we're selecting? Well, to do that, we tap on the arrow here and at the top here, we can tap this one. And instead of it just being pinned to one track, we can tap focused track. And now when we use this, it will actually change the volume of any track we select. One thing to keep in mind is that sometimes with knobs and dials and switches, you do need to first turn them all the way up or all the way down or all the way left, all the way right before it will actually engage and start controlling your volume or your other settings. Now to learn more about Learn MIDI, you can check out my other video linked in the description and make sure you subscribe because I'll have a deep dive video into this coming up very soon. But wait, there's more. There will be a new sound pack called Dance Floor Rush, which will be available right here in your sound library once Logic Pro 2.2 is officially released. So what do you think of this new update? I think the Learn MIDI function alone is definitely worth the update, but the new stem splitter is super cool and just those little quality of life changes that can make your Logic Pro experience even better. There's a heap more changes that have been put into place, a lot of bug fixes, a lot of stability improvements. We'll be covering those in future videos, but I wanted to get you up and running and aware of what all the cool new features are here in Logic Pro 2.2. Check out the other videos down in the description and on your screen right now to learn a heap more about this new update. Happy creating, and I'll see you next time.